Welcome to Vital EV TV here at the British Motor Museum in Gaydon, Warwickshire. Now, when people talk about EVs, they think passenger cars. They don't think vans, trucks, shunters, bin lorries, all those heavy duty vehicles that are very diesel dependent and also need decarbonizing and electrifying. I have with me today from Vital EV, Paul Kirby. Now tell me, Paul, how challenging is it going to be to electrify and decarbonize this sector? There's no doubt, Quentin, that this is going to be a tricky sector to electrify. The, ha the vehicles that we're talking about have big batteries, they need a lot of power, and a lot of the time they're going to have the, a real problem in getting that power into the right place. So we know it's going to be difficult, but Vital EV are really helping in this sector get the power right and getting the energy into the vehicles in the most effective way possible. And you have been over to talk to arguably one of the famous, most famous automotive yeah. bus and truck brands in the world about yeah. this. Yeah, we headed over to Mercedes-Benz Bus and Coach in Coventry to find out exactly where the state of the market is for this, uh, for this important sector. We're here at the home of Mercedes-Benz Bus and Coach for their e-mobility live event, an event dedicated to the journey to electrification for their customers. Vital EV have been invited here to host the charging sessions to help customers navigate the challenges of charging. Let's go check it out. So I'm here joined by Adrian Felton, Head of E-Mobility for EvoBus here in the UK. What are we here at today? What's going on? So we're here at our E-Mobility live event today. And the purpose of the event today is to showcase our new workshop facility mm. here in Coventry. So the bus behind us, we've had that now for around 12 months. That bus has covered over 20,000 kilometres in demonstrations with a number of customers. But we've now got to start to prepare as an organisation in investing in the future. And that means that we've got to invest in the tools, the equipment, and in the people so yeah. that we can make that transition ourselves yeah. and help our operators make that transition. So the whole event today has been about the bus, yeah. about showing you what our future agenda is, yeah. showing you the equipment that we need to maintain these vehicles, giving people confidence that we can actually maintain some of the bigger components yeah. and actually give people the confidence that we can train not only their local dealerships to mm. support them, but actually in time their own technicians as well. Adrian. Tell me, the, the, the bus and coach sector, is it really kind of on the ball with electrification? Absolutely. I think when we look at the bus, and bus sector in particular in the UK, there's been a huge amount of stimulation from government right. to help operators to move towards a zero emission uh, uh, transition. And what we've seen is that, in particular in the city bus sector, that the number of registrations have continued to increase over the last two to three years. Brilliant. As the government has outlined its strategy, operators are beginning now to make that transition. And I think last year, it was around 50, 53% of the market for wow. city buses was zero emission. Coaches is moving, not quite as quickly, yeah. but it will come. But I, I, that's the great news, isn't it? That the inner cities are being uh, blessed with zero emission transport and, and at that rate. I know that there is a, a, a challenge with coach, but do you see that sort of happening over the next couple of years? Well, we as an organisation, so Evo Bus UK is part of Daimler Buses, which mm. in turn is part of Daimler Trucks, and we very much have a zero emission agenda. Brilliant. And we are clearly defined in our steps. So we launched our zero emission city bus back in 2018. Yeah. We hope to have an interurban coach by 2025. Fantastic. And certainly by 2030, we would have some form of zero emission coach for long distance. Yeah. We'd hope to see that earlier, yeah. maybe as early as 2027. And that might use either battery electric, it might be hydrogen or a mixture of both. Why have uh, Vital EV been invited to join you here? So Vital have been absolutely instrumental in helping us on our little journey with this here okay. vehicle because when we have demonstrations with people, it's very difficult to put in costly infrastructure just for one vehicle. Yeah. So we actually needed a mobile solution that we could use, that we could plug in, take with us, put it on the vehicle. 
and actually Vital have helped us with one of those fantastic T800 mobile chargers, which I think is great, by the way. It definitely is. The other reason as well is that we are now beginning to look at the partners we need to move forward with the whole of the EV ecosystem. And what we want is partners that we can trust, but partners that are close. And our colleagues at Vital are just down the road in Coventry. For yeah. So for us, that really is easy. Adrian, thanks so much for a real insight into this site and what you're doing here, the journey to electrification, and we're really grateful to be a part of it. Thanks, Thank Adrian. you very much. EV adoption is essential to reducing the harmful emissions in our towns and cities. And buses are beginning to embrace this transition and coaches are catching up. But we're really excited to be helping Mercedes-Benz on their journey to electrification. We are sitting on top of a 100-year-old bus, uh, an AEC 1923. And this, this quarter, diesel buses were overtaken by electric buses for the first time ever in history. So that's a, a kind of real seminal moment. But you do more than just buses and trucks, don't you? Absolutely. We, it's great to see the electrification of the bus sector and it makes so much sense to do so. But what's great is that we're able to help some of the really difficult to electrify sectors of the market, such as the, the vehicles called shunters um, that move the goods around our ports. Those vehicles spend something like 70% of their time idling. So there's a huge amount of diesel to be saved. Um, if we just help that sector of the market decarbonise. So, what's the vehicle that we're in at the moment? This is our YT variant terminal tractor. Uh, we've manufactured this variant since 2019 and it's diesel format when we released it to the global market. We currently manufacture this one in the Netherlands. Uh, we have a similar vehicle uh, being produced in Malaysia. And I'm delighted to say that from 2023, we'll also be manufacturing in North America and a new facility we're about to build there. So Terberg are a global brand then? Terberg are certainly a global brand. Many people will recognize us uh, from our ports and terminal business, um, where we are one of the world's leaders in terminal tractors for container ports. We also have a very strong presence in the logistics sector worldwide. In the United Kingdom, we're very fortunate. Over 85% uh, of consumer goods in the United Kingdom at some point are touched by Terberg product. We have to listen to the voice of the customer and mm. we're, we're, we're very proud of that interaction that we have with our customer base. Mm. And uh, we're, we're developing things ahead of its time. Mm -hmm. um, uh, where we're going on today in our journey with alternative fuels, and you know in the future automation teleoperation so mm. it's about the voice of the customer yeah more so than anything else which is brilliant so let's go and have a look at the uh, at what the voice of the customer yeah. has led you to do yeah be delighted so here we go paul this is our yt203 ev wow this um this as you see looks like the diesel yeah um although it's lovely and green um <laughs> The concept from Terberg was to develop a platform that was a global platform, diesel, yeah. electric, and in the future, hydrogen. Right. So that was one of our USPs. We yeah. didn't set out to develop a solely electric or solely diesel because different markets demand different products. Yeah. And we're on a journey, yeah. and that journey is relatively early and will evolve into something else. Yeah. In the logistics market, we're actually exceeding what we did before. In the port business, wow. we're actually equaling what we did before. Wow. So, and that's a USP again for yeah. us because our competitors in some ways are developing trucks against milk floats right. and we're developing a truck in a truck. So our yeah. drivers can drive out, uh, step out of their diesel into their electric and just experience the benefits of the electric world while still being able to do their job as efficiently as they have done historically. Yeah. We, we've got some of the ChemPower kit yeah. either side of the vehicle, and yeah. obviously you need um, electric charging. Yeah. How, yeah. how did the relationship with Vital and ChemPower kick off? Well, historically we've delivered trucks to customers and we've never delivered fuel stations. 
And, and what we recognized very, very quickly that without us being able to deliver a fueling source, we couldn't deploy our vehicles. We had vehicles, we had no charging, we had no infrastructure. So we were um, encouraged very quickly to get involved in a sector that we had no experience in. Eventually we came to Kempow, and I'll say eventually because we went through quite a few wow. before we got to, to Kempow, and Kempow um, introduced us to Vital EV in the UK. And that was a, that was a turnkey moment for us. Brilliant. Because we were able to, in a lot of ways, sit back and relax because we had eventually found a partner that could work with us to deploy our equipment. So, Alistair, you have a really unique customer base and, and, and a unique operation style, which really suits the Kempower equipment yeah. really well. Tell me a little bit about that. So we're dealing with a customer that traditionally is looking at miles per gallon and, you know, per hundred kilometers and whatever. Yeah. Um, we're not in that space. We're doing very low mileage, mm. but we're doing very high hours. Splash and dash is the diesel thing. Electric, we need to be able to do that. We need to be able to get the power into the vehicle quickly. Mm. One of the challenges that we have is our idle time. Between moving containers and waiting for the next load, the driver sat there waiting for his next message from mm. his RDT terminal. So we, we need to be able to keep the vehicle running. Diesel, he sits there with his engine running. And in the UK, in the logistics sector, that can be anywhere between 60 and 75% of the engine on time Goodness is me. idle. Yeah. And therefore, by definition, we're consuming fuel. Um, and that becomes a big scary number for the customer. So by introducing the EV vehicle with the right size batteries and the right Kemper Vital EV charger, we're able to overcome those. So we have not found a job in the UK so far that we've had to contemplate battery swap or anything like that. We're trying to put the right charger in on day one. Yeah. It's got redundancy if we have a power module failure, mm. so we're still delivering power yeah. until Vital can get out and fix the problem, if yeah. there is one. Mm. But more importantly, we can scale out to the satellite S-series yeah. and gives us, importantly, the dynamic charging. Mm. And that's key to us because our vehicles will come off and online at various times of the hour and day, mm. demanding various different loads and everything else. Alistair, it's been really interesting, insightful and exciting to talk about the journey that Turbog are on and that you're helping your customers on. Mm. Thank you so much for your time today. Paul, you're welcome. Thanks very much for joining us. They must be crazy. They're letting me drive this thing out of here. But before we go, what an amazing journey Turbog are on with Vital EV and the Kempower equipment to decarbonize their whole industry, saving tons of CO2. What a fantastic journey. I think it's worth pointing out that this is a sector that's going to be very, very difficult to electrify as Nepal. It is because we've got big batteries that are very hungry on power and they're going to need to get that power into one place, which is a challenge. And also the capital required to move this transition forward is going to be not insubstantial. But the technology works. So for people out there wondering, how is this going to affect me? What, what sort of change is this? Who are, who are fearful? What would your advice be? The best advice I can give is to head on over to the Vital EV website, just a simple Google click away. And there's plenty of information there that will give you the confidence to begin that transition. And Vital EV will be with you the whole way. And as someone who's been driving electric cars for, what, a dozen years, every single day of my life, make sure that you make your decisions based on facts, carefully researched empirical facts, and not the sort of stuff you read on social media. Do that, and you'll be fine.